It's Saturday, and welcome to episode... Oh, wait. Anyway, a dragon warlord known as Basso Gila has teleported his castle and army to the peaceful animal kingdom of Moberry in order to destroy it and establish his ultimate rule. The Council of Elders decided to task your alligator friend, Charlie, with getting rid of the invaders. Each of the five worlds, except the last, is split into four stages. Air, land, cave, and underwater. But the cool thing about Tailgator is that you first start in a level select area, with four entrances along the right-hand side of the screen. In each world, you need to clear each of the mini-levels behind these entrances, each of which consists of a few different screens to work through, after which the door will close off. Once all four have been beaten, you move on to the next world, but you can choose which of the four to tackle. One of the four has a boss somewhere. It's not always the fourth door, just so you know, but there's always a way to prepare yourself to fight it, so don't worry if you stumble upon it first. The aim of each part of the game is to whip open all the chests with B, which makes Charlie swing his tail. These take three hits each and can contain various things. B tokens add a certain amount onto your score. P tokens add one notch onto your power meter, which, when full, fire a projectile Christopher Belmont style to your tail whips. A bomb that kills all enemies on screen, hearts that replenish a hit point, and lastly, a key that opens the exit. This is what you're looking for, really, and it's always in the final remaining chest, so it doesn't matter what order you open them, it'll always be in the last one. Once you grab the key and take the exit, which is almost always in the top right-hand corner, you move to the next part of the level. After the final part, you're back to the foyer. Here, you're granted two hearts to fill your HP again, three after the end of each world, and you choose the next part you'd like to do. The lowest downstage is often a water level. Now, you're an alligator, so you don't drown, thankfully, but the movement physics are a little different. You fall slower and don't need to jump, but can maneuver about just with the D-pad. The ordinary platform levels have a number of gimmicks, such as temporary platforms, clouds that you'll sink through should you take too long, and the usual spike traps and things of that nature. There are often updrafts and things that propel you in a certain direction. These can help or hinder you. There are lots of different enemies with their own movement patterns. Some follow a specific route, while others target you. Some take one hit, whereas others take several. They'll regenerate after a short while, but you still need to take them out a lot of the time because any contact knocks a health point off. You get a generous invulnerability period afterwards, but even so, you need to be careful as this is a one-life game. You start with five hit points and can have a maximum seven, as indicated by the hearts in the top right. Underneath your health meter is the power gauge I mentioned previously. This also has seven notches on it, and when it's full, you get the extra shot. This is invaluable for fighting bosses, as it allows you to attack from a distance rather than getting up close. The only thing is, once activated, the power gauge will steadily tick down, and you'll lose it once it runs out. You can replenish it for a little while longer by topping the gauge back up with P tokens again, but it will eventually diminish and you'll have to start collecting again. Fortunately, you usually, I think always, get a mega power-up just before fighting a boss that instantly fills your meter, and this gives you plenty of time to wipe out the beast without having to worry about taking a full charge into the boss fight. Like I say, you don't know which door has the boss behind it, so this is a very helpful crutch to have available. The music in this game is a real highlight of the whole library. Suitably high-spirited level themes and foreboding boss music accompanies the whole game, with many different songs in there. You'll not hear the same tune in more than one world, and the sort of foyer area of each world has one of the catchiest melodies I've ever heard on this system. No qualms at all about giving the soundtrack full marks, so mega credit to Iku Mizutani.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.